Whippy, whippy, whippy! Hefty, hefty, hefty! If you hadn't already guessed by the title of this video, I thought today would be a good opportunity to sit down and talk through how, uh, how I've moved my triathlon and I guess more uh, specifically my cycling over the years. I've been doing triathlon now for 10 years or so and moved on as an athlete and a cyclist quite a bit in that time with my FTP currently sitting around like 5 watts per kilo or so. So I thought it'd be interesting to look back over the years at the history and the training I've done and what my journey has been to get to where I am today. As uh, I know, hopefully there'll be a few takeaways there for anyone watching if you're looking to try and increase your own FTP. So I've got one more hill on this ride to get home. So let's get up that and then uh, have a look through the data. Okay, so today's video is all about my journey to a five watt per kilo FTP. And at the end, I'm also gonna go through a few tips which I've kind of learned throughout that time, which are hopefully gonna mean if you're trying to do the same thing, it'll put you a better chance of doing so. So as you can see from this fine photo right here, I started doing triathlon back in 2009, which is, I guess I've been doing it for, this has been my 12th season. Although a few years I haven't actually raced any triathlons, but this event here was a charity sprint distance triathlon based in a swimming pool and the transitions were actually neutralized so you only got time for your swim, bike and run. Hence in this photo why I'm checking my watch because I was super worried about not making the next leg in time and I think in the end I actually ended up kind of doing the transitions normally apart from the swim to bike one where I got changed into this rather fetching attire including squash shorts and mountain bike liner bike shorts. Come quite a long way since then. So from 2009 and that photo where I'm actually I think I'll be 15 in that photo. The next kind of few years until I got to uni was kind of swimming with a swim club, doing weekend cycle rides with a local cycle club, the odd like time trial with them as well. Nothing really structured, kind of training here and there. The swim club was probably the most structured bit, but this, this time was me just kind of taking my first steps into the sport really. 2012, however, everything kind of changed a bit. I ended up going to Loughborough University, which if you don't know, it's it's the best sporting university in the UK. I'm sure there'll be people debating that in the comments. It's the best. It's one bucks, which is like the university sport championship for the past, well, pretty much since it's been running, I think. So it's, it's the ideal place to end up if you want to do sport. I uh, started in the Students' Union Triathlon Club there, which was great. We had like coaches running the sessions. We had structure throughout the week. It was, it was what I'd kind of never had before. And, my whole target through that first year was to get onto the students' performance squad, which had like a dedicated coach that oversaw the squad and also shared kind of training time with the British Triathlon Performance Centre that was also based at the university. And at the end of that first year at uni, I did actually end up on the performance squad. So I think that was the summer of 2013 and that kind of changed things massively for me. An actual coach for the squad, who was setting these sessions and the first summer we went out to Morzine in the Alps and we did like a week long, two week long training camp going up and down the mountains out there which was, I was injured running at the time, story of my life and uh, yeah we're putting some big kind of mileage on the bike and then that winter as well, December we went to Fuerteventura in the Canary Islands on a training camp and once again you can see here I was doing big bike volume 
kind of the odd time trial session here and there. We'd kind of race each other up the hills as well, which was uh, always entertaining, but perhaps not the best training. So lots of volume, lots of easy miles, not very much sort of like over VO2 specific work. We did the occasional sort of chain gang or like simulating sort of draft legal style triathlon racing efforts, which is what I was doing at the time. But not what I'd really call by my own standards today, like structured bike training. Fast forward to 2015 and I bought my very first power meter off a friend at university. I bought a quark power meter wheel off him and a Garmin head unit and at the same time I was also reading the training and racing with a power meter book which I would thoroughly recommend. I'll go into more detail on that later but I started training with a power meter. I was reading kind of about how to use it best and so around that time was when I actually did my first FTP test. So the very first FTP test I did was on the 14th of February, 2015. I was 72 kilograms and I put out 315 watts for the effort. So I think that puts my FTP at like around 300 watts, watts per kilo, low fours maybe, something like that. And that was my very, very first FTP test. Pretty soon after, by the start of March, when you kind of do your first FTP test, you're not quite sure how to pace a 20 minute effort. By the 7th of March, I then did another one. I think I did 345 watts for 20 minutes. So the FTP was then like, what, 330 watts, something like that. And during this time, it was like, my training had completely transformed. I wasn't just going out for long rides. I was doing intervals within the long rides, sort of really hard stuff, structured stuff, looking at my training stress score for all my rides, planning sessions in advance to kind of, to manipulate that training stress score leading up to races. So very, very different training to what I'd done before that point. Off the back of this sort of revelation and the fact that I had some pretty persistent running injuries at the time, I then did a season of bike racing and moved myself from fourth cat, which is what you start out in the UK, up to second cat. Can't remember how many races, it was probably like five or six races I think I did it in. We had a quite a good result at a team event and that pretty much put me into second cat. And I think my last bike race, I went, mm, this is quite dangerous and to get to the next level, there's a lot of very good cyclists and I don't think I really want to take the risk. Like, if you've ever done crit racing, it's, it's pretty dangerous compared to triathlon and something which you've got to be prepared to put your body on the line for. At the end of that season as well, I had another first. So up to that point, I'd only really done draft legal triathlons, but at the end of 2015, I did my first half Ironman and this was the Heaver Castle Triathlon. The Castle Series events are fantastic, but super hard. 90K bike course, normalized power was 292 watts, which only brought me in at two hours 45 for a half Ironman. So you can imagine how hilly that course is. I was also pretty wrecked after that and ran like a 145 half, although once again, like a cross country style course, so pretty slow. Into 2016 and I was still continuing to train with the power meter, doing things a little more uh, planned out and specific than I had done before. And I did an FTP test towards the start of this year and actually managed 348 watts for 20 minutes. So once again, FTP somewhere just over 330 watts. In April 2016, I also did my first ever 25 mile time trial and I think I averaged 320 watts which brought me in at something like 53 minutes 46 something around there and uh, that was another another first for me there at the end of 2016 so September 2016 I entered the Vitruvian triathlon I'd already done the Dam Buster these are both races based at Rutland Water in the UK if you're familiar and it was a half iron distance race and my second one ever after I'd done that Castle Series one and I actually managed to win overall in that race and I normalized power was 290 watts, I think, for the bike leg there, um, which was obviously good enough with like a 120 half marathon off the back of that to then the following year actually qualify for my pro license. So I took my pro license after that race and then planned in a few races for 2017. At this point, I was working with a new coach who was actually the old head coach of the British Triathlon Performance Center at Loughborough while I was there. And we were really now getting very specific with the training I was doing to target it towards not bike racing, not draft legal triathlon, but 70.3 sort of sustained two, two and a half hour long power. So I did two races as a pro in 2017. The first one was Challenge Magan in Gran Canaria and the second one was Challenge Lisbon in Portugal. 
Grand Canaria I normalised 298 watts for a 2 hour 35 bike split, very hilly course that one. And then Lisbon I did a normalised power of 302 watts which was a good enough for a 2 hour 10 bike split. Although I didn't actually end up finishing that race in the end. It turned out in Gran Canaria I crashed on the bike, hurt my wrist, basically lots of complications later it turned out it was broken but the final diagnosis was it wasn't broken until about eight months later and then I needed surgery to get my wrist sorted out so the following kind of season so the whole 2017 season most of 2018 well all of 2018 season was then written off whilst I had this surgery got myself back into one piece however after those two pro races I did actually do one bike time trial and where I'd done a hell of a lot of training and preparation for those first pro races I got some pretty good numbers out of myself. I did a 10 mile TT on my road bike and bearing in mind the position on a road bike is slightly more powerful like I normalized 388 watts for 20 minutes on my road bike which was a definite new PB and that pretty much put me at that 5 watts per kilo mark. So fast forward a bit to August 2018 and I started working with my new coach, Chris from Pure Performance Coaching, who you will have probably seen on the channel, if not the link to his website is down in the bio. And that's been a really successful couple of years. He's got some great protocols for testing power. We then work on sessions that are based off of the results of those protocols. That means that the sessions are all perfect for bringing me on to race better over 70.3 distance. And the proof was in the pudding for that really. Last year at Outlaw X where I raced and came ninth overall out of all of the pros that were racing as well, bearing in mind I'm no longer in the pro category but hoping to regain that soon. My normalised power for that race was 323 watts and that was good enough for a 2 hour 11 bike split on what was definitely not a flat course. I'm really excited by that race last year and I think that going forward we've got a lot of kind of untapped avenues to explore and I'm pretty optimistic that I'm going to be able to push my power beyond that 5 watts per kilo FTP. Right, so that's pretty much my journey to how I got to my current FTP and hopefully that was somewhat interesting but I think more importantly for anyone watching, how would I suggest that you guys, what would you do to get to this same point? What are the things that I've learned over that time? The first crucial point is get yourself a coach or if you can't afford yourself a coach, do some reading up around training and racing with a power meter, the book I mentioned earlier. It's a really good resource, it gives you a great starting point. There's loads more to explore and read and discover out there on how to get the most out of yourself with a power meter, but getting a coach and getting a power meter, those two things will really bring you on so much more than you'd be able to otherwise. The next tip, and I haven't been the best at this myself over the years, but you really need to be consistent with your training. So it doesn't matter if you can kind of plug in a few huge weeks of cycling. What matters the most is just doing enough to keep your body adapting to a training stimulus over a very long period of time. That The results of compounding those weeks up will be far greater than any sort of one big hit training week stimulus block will give you. My earlier training days were plagued with this. I'd do 28, 30 hour weeks and then find myself injured, burnt out, any of the above, and then being unable to actually build on where I'd got to by the end of that point. If anything, it was two steps forward, two steps back. I wasn't even progressing really. Okay, the next step, and this ties into the coaching, the educating yourself, few books to read. You need to understand what your weaknesses are and then train accordingly for those weaknesses. So with my current coach, we do some power profiling, which allows us to tailor the training to what's gonna make me better. This is kind of something which you can do yourself if you understand what your power curve is, perhaps what you're more suited to, where your different thresholds lie. You'll then have a better idea of what the training and intervals that you need to be doing look like in order to move your cycling on. And my final tip today is one which is much easier learnt by doing than someone telling you. You really need to be patient. This takes so much time to get better at. You can probably see from 2009 to now, you get diminishing returns after a point. They do still come, but you have to keep trying new things and being consistent. All of the other things I've mentioned so far, but if you're not in this for kind of like a, a long-term project, 
you're going to have to make do with probably not the best performance you can expect out of yourself. It's, it's something that you've got to give plenty of time for. Don't look for shortcuts. Don't look for quick fixes. You need to be prepared to put the work in and ultimately wait for those results to come. So that was my journey so far and hopefully a few useful tips for you guys to take away and apply to your own training. Happy to answer any questions on those in the comments. If you've got any questions from a coach, I can ask those to him as well. Another thing which has happened which is very exciting today is the channel has actually ticked over to 1,000 subs, which is incredible. It was only back in April last year that I think I was introducing a video to my 38 subscribers. Thank you. So in less than a year, we've gone from that to 1,000 subs and that's all thanks to you guys watching and subscribing. And it means a lot. I'm gonna keep on doing videos, keep the standard high because I don't really want to be putting rubbish out there. I love creating high quality videos and hopefully you guys will keep enjoying them. If, uh, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're growing and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. I'll see you in the next one.